We're gonna talk to some people, gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna talk to Hello? some people, gonna learn a lot of stuff. We're gonna talk to some Hello? people, gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna talk to some Hello? people, gonna learn a lot of stuff. Cause it's the Hi, everybody. It's a new season of the Kristen Knows Blank podcast. There's a brand new episode, and my guest today is Bananas. Hi, I'm Kristen. Thank you so much for joining. Find me through my website, kristenkey.com. I'm actually in the middle of a comedy tour right now called the Lesbian Army Tour. You don't have to be a lesbian to join. You can be uh, anybody. I love seeing straight men at my show. I love seeing mothers and grandmothers and trans people and bisexuals and non-binaries and everybody in between. Come to one of my shows. They're, they're a really good time. Join my Lesbian Army via my Patreon. There's some special exclusive stuff. There's a monthly newsletter. Some bonus videos there's a game night that we have it's really fun now this season's been so wonderful so far we've had some some great guests we had leah delaria nina west today's margaret show did i say margaret show <gasps> I'm so excited. I cannot believe she said yes. Anyway, uh, I don't know if you've noticed a theme, but so far we've had some amazing queer icons. And I just want you to know I am aware of this and we're doing it on purpose. Uh, right now, the world is a, a very interesting place to be a gay person, especially if you are a young gay listener. I want you to know you are not alone. This is why gay visibility is so important. And I've been lucky enough to book three amazing gay icons in a row. And uh, we've talked uh, at least a little bit with each of the guests about how important it is to have visibility and to tell people that you are not alone and uh, we are safer in numbers. My guest today, you can see on season two of Hulu's Life and Beth with Amy Schumer. Um, she's also right in the middle of her tour, Live and Livid. You probably know her because she's a gay icon and a hero of mine. Hey, computer lady, play that interview with Margaret Cho. Playing interview with Margaret Cho. So nice to meet you. Thank you so much for coming Nice to on meet today. you. Thank you. I know you're busy right now. Uh, you're uh, guest starring on season two of Life and Beth, Amy Schumer show on Hulu. Yes. How yes. is that? What's what's your character like this season? I am uh, uh, the uh, OBGYN, <laughs> so I'm I'm which I love. I love doing that. <laughs> I think it's really perfect. It's really <laughs> fitting, and um, I had a great time. I I love them. I love the show, and so it's a really it's a really cool show. That's fabulous. Yeah, the season one was hilarious. Um, and yeah. also you're touring your tour right now, which is uh, Live and Livid. That's right. Oh, my God. That's there's right. so, so many things to be livid about in this world right oh now. Oh, my God. There's so many. Where do we even begin? And, a... and there's more every day. Yeah. Yeah. How do you how do you find how do you keep the funny uh, as a as a, I know you, you've, you've never shied away from controversial topics or things that need to yeah. be discussed, you know, for the queer community, for women's rights. You know, you talk about them, but you also how do you find levity in the in this shit? Well, humor is hope. You know, that's the the magic of it. And humor is the one thing that can cut through all of the pain and sadness and tragedy to find the hope in the situation. Um, so that's the one thing that I always turn to, the one thing that I have. It's tough, though. It's really frustrating, especially, you know, uh, this last week with the death of Next Benedict yeah. and the reaction of Oklahoma and the government and, you know, like, it's a, hor a horrible situation uh, across the board, but created by homophobia, created by these politicians and cultural influencers, people like Libs of TikTok, who think it's necessary to, to somehow attack a community that has nothing to do with them. Yeah. For no reason. For no reason. No reason. It's It's so infuriating. So... The one thing we can do is look for the hope in the situation, which my hope now, it's like maybe this will inspire us to make sure this never happens again. Yeah, I hate that um, this is what it took to perhaps make some sort of headway yeah. and change and, and also some correct information regarding things like these trans bathroom laws. I have a family member that lives in Oklahoma that mm -hmm. actually was talking to me about, like, well, at our high school, um, kids are identifying as cats and the su superintendent had to put litter boxes in. I go, I don't think that's true. That's not true. And they said, no, no, no. I heard it from a good friend, a good source. And I, I said, no. let's Google it together. And we Googled it. And I was like, this is a hoax. This it's a, a joke. This is it's not, a joke. It's yeah. And it's, I said, why it's would just they a do joke. That? I said, because this is how you keep trans people afraid. This is how you, you uh, continue discriminating against marginalized communities by creating these, these crazy, crazy stories. 
And it's a distraction from what's really the problem. It's just a distract. It's a way for people to get so flustered and angry about something that doesn't exist rather than talking about the real problem, which is guns. Rather than talking about the real problem, which is guns. Yeah. Like they don't want to talk about that. So they're going to talk about something that is not real, totally yeah. made up. Yeah. It made up as a joke. Yeah. And we have to like, remember those things aren't real. And we have to explain to a whole bunch of people that's not real. Right. That's not real. And it's really, it's so frustrating. Also, um, you know, a cat is not just going to go in a, a litter box at school. Like you would have to like, you know, if, if I, I would, I did, I identify as a cat sometimes. And if I, I'm not going to go in a new litter box. I'm also not going to go in somebody else's litter box. So obviously <laughs> they know ridiculous. nothing about cats. <laughs> you don't even know, like I, I, there, there's just, you have to get somebody used to a new litter box. You have to use the right, it's got to be the right substrate, you know? Like, how are we talking about covered box? Are we talking closed box? Is it a little robot? Little robot? I want to know what's cat. What kind of litter box are we talking about? Yeah, clearly they've never met a cat. Yeah. So obviously made up because you don't know cats. You don't know people. Yeah. You don't know what is going on. So there is an example of how we deal with this kind of tragedy through humor. So as you know, you're a yeah. comedian. So, you know, we do this every day. This is how we find hope. And it's, I mean, it's a way to stop, you know, to not, uh, you know, beat our fists into the wall or throw things. Cause I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm in recovery and I'm sober now, but it's like when I, I don't want, want to drink a lot, but I want to throw things and sweep tables. That's like my, oh I, yeah, I love to do that, but that's, that's not healthy, you know? No, it's, that's real tough. I'm sobs as well. Oh, nice. Nice. Hopped up. So high, high five. We got to be sobs to fight the fight. Yeah. And it's really, it's really like, what do you do? Like when you can't bury it in booze or whatever what do you do right right and it's and i'm not supposed to sweep tables and throw things because i live with a woman my wife is not keen on that you know like, can't you know yeah it's it's really that's really tough too like we got to keep it and also direct it out direct all of that anger out in a place where it's productive and makes sense and we're not attacking things inanimate objects or things in our environment or people in our environment Unfortunately, which happens because it is it real happens. fun it is real that's fun. called redirected aggression if you have cats you know <laughs> same thing you try to get in a fight with two cats or if you're even in the vicinity of a cat fight you may get you may get fucked up so i used to have like cardboard that i would put in between them and i realized that three, doesn't right? really work there's three is there a power dynamic or the girls against the guys? Is there a, an alliance at some point? Well, the girls are always against the boy in some capacity, but sometimes there's the, I have one girl was, she saw the picture of her. She's large, much larger than everybody. She has a very long tail. So she's deaf also, which makes her the, like she has a mastery over this whole house because she is so unaware of like loud noises. She really she does really well on like 4th of July when everybody else is cowering. She's like, nothing's wrong. You know, it's in her world, nothing is wrong. And uh, I've really taken a lot of time to raise her in a way that she's never scared. Like if I need to wake her up, I'll uh, flick, flicker the lights. So then she can feel the temperature of the light on her skin. And then she's woken up. So she knows, oh, meals are coming or... Um, you know, something's happening that I need to be aware of. Um, so I never go and touch her when she's sleeping because I don't want her to be startled. Right. I never make a sort of like intrusion into her silent life when she's not seen me first or, you know, do anything. So it's like it, taken a while, but I've built her confidence, but I have created a monster. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, does she, well, do, are her next. other senses, senses heightened because of this? Yes, she can smell anything. She can um, really uh, perceive things that like outside of hearing, but vibration. Wow. So she's aware of like animals outside, um, not necessarily by seeing them, but I think by smell and vibration. And she's just really intuitive. And she also is the friendliest. If anybody comes here, she's always sitting right in their lap and- Aww. 
Um, she's really, really affectionate and really, really loving. It's hairless cats, man. They it's, are uh, so, it's like so the, beautiful. The, the best and the worst thing about them because it takes a second to get used to the um, their texture. Well, it's just they're like hot peaches. <laughs> if you left peaches in the car in the summer after the farmer's market and then you say, oh, I left those peaches in the car and then you open the car and then you pick one up and that's the, the, that's the Sphinx cat. It's, oh. They're so beautiful. I love the breed. Um, there's a lot of care that goes into having one because you do have to maintain. I, I clean their ears and I cut their, I cut seven, 17 nails a week. <laughs> or no, no, 72 na nails a week. How do because you I have to cut everybody's nails else? a little bit every day. So 72, seven, not 17, 72 nails because everybody has eight nails, right? So no, ten, it, everybody has 18 nails. How many nails? So, I, I have no idea how many nails per foot on a cat. It's uh, four, three, it's four, five. Ten, ten, no, it's 10, uh, 18. Because four in the back, 10 oh. in the front. Oh. Four, uh, eight in the back, 10 in the front. Okay. So with all of these animals, I'm, I'm gl glad I don't have a six-toed cat because then it would be much more. But Or a five-legged one. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Or, or I, <laughs> But you have to clean their ears pretty much every day and you have to do their nails pretty much every day because they get like uh, sebum and, you know, oil and everything caught under their cuticles. So I have to clean, and, and Uju does too, the um, lycoid. So I have to clean under their nails every day, and in there, it, it, that's kind of kind of a project. That's a lot. I'm. I'm it's so. It's so I feel much. Like I'm just catching you between clippings. I can do it like while doing other things. Like I can do it, and I do it. I don't wrap them up in anything. I don't restrain them in any way. What I do is I wait till they're tired out from playing, and then I get one nail. Like and so there's nail clippers everywhere. <laughs> In every surface <laughs> all over the house. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that must be fun for you too. It's like, oh, someone's getting sleepy. Yeah, you just get one nail, one nail here, one, and it gets done over the week. Wow, do you keep um, like a, I mean, just a mental spreadsheet in your head of like, okay. I've yeah, which one got done? On that one, we've got three toes over there. Or, yeah. But I'm sure you can see just by looking. You keep on like thinking about it and you sort of, you can grab one and, you know, usually one will come over and be tired and then I can grab them and just do like one or two. You couldn't do this if you weren't sober. I will say there's no, no way you no. can keep up with that many toes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Or one, one cat would have just a full manicure and the rest of them would be I know, snaggly. be sad. Yeah. Yeah. Sad. Um, I watched Saltburn because you watched Saltburn and wanted to talk oh, yes. about it. So I watched this two days ago uh, just to get ready for this episode. And now there's nobody on the planet I'd rather talk about it with than you. I loved it. What a film. I thought it was so... Uh, there was one comment on Letterboxd that got me that said, um, sometimes you got to bottom your way to the top. <laughs> and I thought that's <laughs> just genius. That's exactly it. You know, also... Uh, Barry Keoghan has, you know, mask energy. He's got mask lesbian energy, which yeah. I think is, he's got, he's, if you just looked at him, he really will be on um, the next season of The Ultimatum. Mm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I would love to see him. Well, cause yeah, he did, I didn't think, I was like, why do, am I relating to this character? Lesbians like at heart are stalkers. We mm -hmm. love to look at people from afar and just stare and then fantasize and date, especially young lesbians. But it really did capture like what that gay crush is when all of it happens right. in your head. I yeah. mean, I think there was, I've, I've heard the expression, I drink their bath water, but I've yeah. never seen it. And it was like it was in a literal, I wanted it to be, yeah. It was so, uh, I, I just thought it was so satisfying. And um, that's just the details. Um, you know, Emerald Fennell is so good with those, those like beautiful details. Like my favorite was after the party, you know, where it's all like the horrible party, mm -hmm. um, that shot in the morning where it's just the, in the toilet bowl and you see that Coke diarrhea at yeah. the, <laughs> which to me is like, oh my God, it's like so, so good. <laughs> it's like, you know, everything you need to know about that party. It's bad Coke, but they did enough of it. <laughs> That so it's like that it's like that that it's like oh okay it's just that it's that kind of those mornings it was really you know that's why I don't do drugs. <laughs> sure, yeah, I've I mean I thought I had irritable bowel for seventeen years. Turns out that completely went away when I got sober. Who yeah, 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 incredible.
things we find out about ourselves. Oh yeah, and I was in complete denial. I was like, it's probably coffee. It's probably coffee. I should. Yeah, get that's the what coffee. They, yeah, I do. You know, it's, I, it's gluten. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not vodka. No, vodka it, no, not, it's there's gluten. nothing in there that's bad for you. Yeah, <laughs> there was a lot of fun sex in the movie as well. And as is really, you're a sex positive person. Did anything in the movie shock you? No. You know what I was shocked by was the shock of everybody in the world. To me, it's not shocking to drink the bathwater. It's not shocking to go down when somebody on there on their period. That's like totally normal. I mean, and normal and like it, it's sexy. It's it's un uh, unencumbered. It's unrestrained. It's uh, you know how do we act in the moment sexually? That's unbound, which I think is really it's it's the naturalness. It's also the embracing the animal side of what sexuality is. So to me, those things were not perverse. They were actually oh, here's somebody who is really unbothered by yeah. the depth of their attraction. And so I think that's really unique, you know? Yeah. Um, what was shocking was when he's talking to his parents. <laughs> that was really uncomfortable. That was way more uncomfortable than a period right. fellatio scene for me. Yeah. yeah. Straight that, I mean, parents with a, like, I don't even know what to describe him as. I don't know how to clinically diagnose I was, him. It's yeah. it, is it like histrionic? Maybe it's also um, schoolgirl crush meets like I'm yes, not sure. erotomania meets um, you know it's it's like I'm sure it's kind of under the BPD kind of somewhere um, also maybe also on the spectrum yeah somewhere but to the sense of like his parents trying to you know and then. Felix likes bringing him there, you know, also Felix bringing him there, making him face up to this, you know, that all, that whole scene was far more upsetting than any of the sexuality portrayed. Isn't that, isn't that odd? Because now that you pointed out, that is, that's where I got taken out of the, I got so desensitized to the rest of it where I am, you know, you feel like I'm, I'm in this castle. I'm living with this upper echelon where there's nothing taboo. You know, we have all the money in the world. Yeah. So what is sexuality at this point? It's just, you know, feeding every desire. And then all of a sudden you're back to, oh, this is a regular middle-class family with like morals mm -hmm. and values. That's yeah. Odd. Yeah. And also the trying, trying to appease this son who is sort of like distant and trying to reach him in, in, the, you know, with this kindness, with this sort of familiarity and glad that he's come to visit and all this stuff. So I think there's a, a you know, a, and then a, to me that, that film, that part of the film, I almost had to stop watching because I was so freaked out. <laughs> like yeah. that was like the, the, um, confrontation of it really almost like that uh, that was like oh this is why this film is so disturbing it's very uncomfortable it was a very uncomfortable yeah. scene yeah Way yeah more oh but i did i don't know why as a lesbian i really enjoy movies that show full frontal male nudity i'm like there you love go it. more love wieners it. in movies you know love a wiener uh love a short king uh <laughs> i love uh that the 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 dancing without that that kind of like abandon you know like just taking it all in and the, the joy that he's feeling in that moment. It's really, it's captivating. It was really fun. I had, I, I had heard about that scene, but I hadn't got to watch it. And I was like, well, I'll never listen to the song the same way again. But mm -hmm. also I don't know how, as an actor, how, how do you find that freeness? What a fun, what a fun scene to like get to tap into in film. It's so fun. And it's another, I think it's just another expression of the graveside scene which is like people were thinking that's very perverse and oh how could you but it's really it's the same thing of like you know let's greet this with abandon let's open up our emotions and see what happens and to the abandon of this like you know whatever it is i don't want to no spoilers but i'm sure if you haven't even seen the film people have talked about it so much that's all they say so the bathtub the graveside i loved it so much i loved i just love emerald Fennell's like world view and i love female filmmakers and I love that she is also nostalgia for 2008 which is so funny to me like that's so crazy in my head I am I'm, I'm 43 but in my head I'm just like well that was just that was just not that long ago I mean that it's feels not 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 distant at all but I can tell the younger generation it is it is. It's really funny. What else did I learn from you? Uh, omakase sushi. Yes. Is this where is this where you just you're sitting at the bar and you go, 
whatever. Yeah, right? the, they the it it's sort of dictated by the market, what's available in the ocean that day, what came from the ocean, what came from the market, what's kind of in um season and to me it's the skill of the chef and also the you know and that the skill of the chef that has much more to do with understanding the natural world and what is the world going to offer you that day and and the things that you can combine with that so it's almost like it's less of a chef more of a painter you know oh, wow. it's more of like somebody capturing the landscape of the world but not for your eyes, it's for your mouth. But also for your eyes a little bit, you know? And it's just, a, to me, it's an art form. And it can't, it not, doesn't really apply to other cuisines as artfully as it does to sushi because sushi, the simplicity belies the complexity. So I just really love it. Uh, and um, to me, it's, it's, a good, it's a good time. Is there a level of trust involved with like, you just, you know that it's going to be good and so you don't worry about it? Or is there ever part that's like... I hope, you know, I hope he doesn't fuck me up, you know? Well, I mean, you wouldn't necessarily do that with like the sushi preparation at like Ralph's, <laughs> you know, like I want the, you know, sit a cup belly up to the sushi bar at, at Ralph's and say, I want the omakase. Uh, Some but, Skittles. Yeah, <laughs> which I think is good. Some of my favorite sushi has Doritos. They do have like... Talk me, just talk me through it because I'm, I'm in for, I'll do anything once. They'll know? take a roll and then like, you know, instead of, uh, whatever tempura crumbs or whatever they put over, they'll, they'll roll it in like Takis. Oh, wow. You know? So to me, there's a artful, there's a playfulness to it. Um, but I think when they can combine, like what's, what's good at the market, which, which, you know, and all of the different things with the fruit and vegetable and herbs and whatever and then the fish too it's just very artful and and it comes with like reputation you know like that's what you're kind of buying you're buying the reputation of the chef or the the particular restaurant and um you know you're also buying into the experience of just sitting there with the chef usually i'll go alone and i'll sit there and they'll just take you through the courses usually it's about 13 bites wow. which makes up a meal how and fun too, are they? And they're all different. They're all unique, right? Yep. How fun. all unique, different elements. Some things maybe you like more than others. Some things you just can't believe are so good. Some things it's like texturally good. Some things it's flavor. You know, it's always very different. But and that's what I love. This. this isn't just like a Margaret Cho thing. And like anybody can do it. <laughs> okay. It's time for five quick questions. Oh, I could talk to you all day. This is a podcast in three parts. We got to chit chat for a little bit. Now we've got five quick questions in a Mad Lib before I release you back into the wild. Five quick questions. Number one. You're on death row. What's your last meal? I would like to have Korean barbecue. Okay. Yeah. That's my favorite thing. Okay. You get it. Granted. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number two. Number two. Question number two. Finish this sentence. Call me petty, but I would dump someone just for... Being late. You know, I hate when people are late. Like, I'm not talking about one or two or three or even four times, but every time. And, you know where it's just somebody who's just not valuing your time. Like, I think that's just a really, just tough to deal with. I mean, I, I'm i not a late, I, I, I'm always early, but I, I just think time is our most important, unrenewable, non-renewable resource. So Absolutely. it's precious. And you've got toes to clip. I mean, you've got, a, you've that's got right. shit to do. Yes. Uh, number three, question number three, what is your favorite song to sing while naked? My favorite song to sing while naked, it's, I think it might be, again, like right now, the Saltburn, it's a murder on the dance floor, but he better not kill the groom. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That's Good the one. thing. When I think about it, it's always a naked song. I'll put on, uh, I've had, I don't want to say her name, but anyway, my robot lady that you say her name and she does stuff for you. Um, I'll have her play David Rose's The Stripper if I'm naked ooh, for long, because it's ooh, such a fun that, Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. It just makes you want to be naked. Yeah. So we have actual naked songs now. Uh, question number four, weapon of choice. Oh, uh, ice pick, like straight up basic instinct. Whoa. I love Sharon Stone and I love, I love basic, it's problematic. <laughs> we basic grew up in a different time. We lived in a different so time. It's so good. Yeah. Everybody that was a lesbian had a vest on. 
So you could know like it was like a uniform. It's like a vest. It's always. Not, they're not wrong though. I I know. Usually, I wear one as my my daily vest, and I change out of it for other things. But I have a daily yeah. uniform vest, so it's not. They're not wrong. It's so good. Oh, it's so good. I it's so funny. Vests. Do you wear vests? Yes. Vests are, okay. Yeah. Vests yes. are the best. I feel like vests are, are so good. There was that scene in what was it? Uh, Black Widow, where. Uh, Florence Pugh is going through the, oh, this vest, so many pockets. I'm like, yes. <laughs> it's so, it's so handy. Question number five, question number five. What is the correct amount of cats? Um, as many as you could handle. You know, I think cats are just the best. I mean, I think Freddie Mercury had it right. He had 10. That's a good amount. That's a good amount of cats. And now it's time for Rad Libs. Yes. All right, it's my favorite time. Thank you so much for, for talking to me, for playing my five quick questions. And now, the favorite part of every episode, we're going to do a Mad Lib together that I've written specifically for you. So wow. There's just some parts of speech that are missing. I'm going to ask you for the parts of speech, and together, we're going to make a really fun story. Okay. Um, all right, let's start. I need an adjective. Colorful. An event. The Met Gala. A genre. Noir. Accessory. A carabiner. <laughs> Preach it. I'm like, which one do I reach for to show her? Yes. <laughs> uh, another adjective. Stiff. A noun. Litter box. Yep. Oh, boy. Uh, an expression of gratitude. Thanks. Perfect. A liquid. Water. Plural noun. Uh, hairs. Yes. <laughs> the story's getting good. Uh, a body part. Feet. Foot. Yep. Uh, just an exclamation. No. No. Another adjective. Bluish. A uh, noun. A gorilla. Hmm. That, uh, I mean, you don't know it, but the story took a twist. Oh. A negative response. Shit. Uh, a nickname. Peg leg. Peg leg. Occupation. Nurse. Uh, another plural noun. Pillows. Plural body part. Uh, buttocks. Yes. And an adjective. Swirly. We have a story, my friend. Alas, alas. Based on uh, uh, the movie Saltburn. The story nice. is just called So You've Been Invited to a Castle. Amazing. When one finds oneself invited to a colorful dinner party, gala, or the Met Gala at a friend's castle, it's important to observe a certain etiquette. Your invitation will indicate time, place, and what to wear, be it black tie, country club casual, or noir. If it says formal, it is customary for men to wear a suit and carabiner. Ladies, a stiff gown. That's true. If the invitation says cocktail attire, then ladies, it's time to pull out that little black litter box. <laughs> Once you arrive at the event, do remember to tell your host, thanks for inviting you. Never show up empty handed. It's customary to present the host with a bottle of water or a bouquet of hairs. <laughs> then shake the host's feet and pay them a compliment, such as, no. What a bluish home you have, or congratulations on your new gorillas. When dinner is served, don't be afraid to try new flavors, but if you absolutely must refuse a dish, politely say, shit, I don't care for any. <laughs> Remember to use appropriate titles when addressing nobility, such as yes sir, or no peg leg. Most importantly, do try to avoid controversial topics and instead stick to light conversations, such as how about those nurses, or good news, pillows are in season. Topics everyone enjoys. So congratulations on climbing the social ladder. If you follow these tips, you should expect many more invitations to rub buttocks with the rich and swirly. Oh, that was great. Well done. Amazing. Incredible. Oh, you're yes. the best. Well, um, everybody, uh, please watch Margaret Cho on this season of Hulu's Life and Beth. And uh, oh my God, your tour, your tour. Where are you, where are you going next? Um, Live and Livid goes to uh, Philadelphia and Pittsburgh and Austin. So you can find out where I'm at and on and more at margaretcho.com. Also on um, Instagram, Margaret underscore Cho and on TikTok, The Margaret Cho. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you. This was great. Interview complete. Margaret can return to doing what she does best. Clipping kitty toenails. 
Margaret Show, thank you so much for coming on to the show today. You are an absolute legend and an icon. Thank you. Hey, thank you for listening, listeners. Really appreciate you supporting the show. Take a second. If you liked the, the episode, put a little comment in. Put a little review. Tell us what you think. Find me through my website, kristinkey.com. As I mentioned, there's the Lesbian Army Tour coming to a city near you. Uh, so find out when I'll be there and, and come see me. And if I'm not coming to a city near you, hey, reach out. Send me a message and be like, hey, Kristen, what the hell? And maybe we can fix that. Uh, next time, next next time, I'll be bringing you another amazing guest. And so until then, bye. We're gonna talk to some people. Gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna talk to Hello. some people. Gonna learn a lot of stuff. We're gonna talk to some Hello. people. Gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna talk to some Hello. people. Gonna learn a lot of stuff. Cause it's good.